So it is Wednesday and some of you may know that that means that the newest episode of What If, I don't know why I pronounce newest like that, um, but the newest episode of the Marvel What If series has dropped. It is T'Challa as Star-Lord. So spoilers ahead, I'm going to give my thoughts and well, before we get into it, I just want to say that I absolutely loved it. <laughs> This episode was crazy, definitely um, like 10 times more different from the main storyline than the Captain Carter episode. I felt that like that was extremely realistic to what would happen if um, like Peggy took the super soldier serum. Um, but this one was like outrageous, so much changed. And it makes me think if the theory um, that this is actually the same world as the Captain Carter episode and that little thing sparked this different thing to happen but at the same time I don't really know how uh, Peggy becoming um, like Captain Carter would make T'Challa step outside of like the Wakandan border from throwing his spear and get picked up by Yondu and there is something later in the episode that confirms that Captain America does exist in this universe however um, this was still like crazily different from the like the main storyline i don't think that this is realistic at all to what would happen if the child became star lord but um i still very much enjoyed the episode and well yeah i'm gonna talk about it so for starters nebula has hair and her and star lord are a thing um how does that work then i know nebula obviously got like uh taken apart and put back together with like mechanical parts by thanos but <laughs> she had hair. How did she get her hair removed? I don't know. But anyway, her and Star-Lord being kind of a thing is weird. And after we saw Nebula and we saw Thanos, I'm going to talk about him in a minute. Um, where was Gamora? I don't know. But I did really hope to see Gamora in this episode. Uh, Drax was hilarious when he saw T'Challa. And yeah, going back to Thanos, that was really interesting. The fact that T'Challa just like convinced him to change his ways. And he like, well became part of the Ravengers. I thought that was really cool, to be fair. And it just shows that, well, Thanos truly did think that he was doing the right thing because, well, when he was shown that he wasn't doing the right thing, well, he immediately changed from what he was doing. Um, and I think that fits the character of T'Challa. If anyone could convince Thanos what he was doing was wrong, T'Challa is probably one of the main candidates to do so, so that's relatively realistic. But yeah, I just thought it was really cool to see Thanos as one of the good guys and there's so much cool stuff that I want to talk about that happens a little bit later in the episode but I'm going to try and mention things that happen um, in chronological order. So like I said uh, Drax was obviously quite funny in this episode. I can't imagine how he became like part of the Ravengers or at least like hanging out with them but obviously Thanos not becoming a bad guy. Um, his wife and daughter are still alive and obviously he mentions this because he loves them very much and I just thought it was so cool. Like they definitely point out all the like things that did or didn't happen due to the fact that um, T'Challa is Star-Lord rather than Peter Quill and you know I think that was really good of them to do that it's just nice seeing everything else that like was different so moving on to this obviously they go on their little mission and we see Howard the Duck in the like collector's place obviously and T'Challa lets him out I thought that was cool I thought we see a little bit more of him um, I'm not too like knowledgeable on the Howard the Duck character but I thought he was alright in this episode, nothing too special, obviously goes to the bar and leaves T'Challa as T'Challa like slides under the door, um, not really too much to talk about with Howard but I thought I'd mention him. Then uh, the comedy in this episode was very very good, like I mentioned Drax earlier, I thought that was good, very in character, um, yet still funnier than I find Drax in the movies, like obviously we are saying about the pictures, to saying T'Challa looks really bad, he looks really good, I did think that was funny, and another thing that I thought was really funny um, is Captain Genocide, now obviously one of the people that works for Ronan in the Guardians of the Galaxy, well in this episode as well, like changed sides at the start when he was like admiring T'Challa as Star-Lord which I think just shows like a big difference between Peter Quill and T'Challa because obviously no one knew who Peter Quill was as Star-Lord but everyone knows T'Challa as Star-Lord which I thought was cool um but yeah obviously this guy decides to call uh Thanos Captain Genocide and I think that was um that was quite funny and fitting because well that is basically what Thanos was going to do genocide and that is mentioned quite a lot in this episode especially at the end 
Now they go to the collector's place because obviously they're trying to get that thing to revive a planet or has the power to do so. Um, and the Black Order are the security guards for the collector. And the collector is wham. Like he appears to be very, very powerful and very different to him in the main timeline. And I'm like curious as to how T'Challa becoming Star Lord um makes him do this um but still i'm all for it he was a really interesting character in this episode i w i loved him and i loved seeing the black order because i think they're really cool characters and seeing them as security cards was kind of just weird rather than people trying to go after the infinity stones but like i said i was all for it it was really cool then obviously nebula being her like dark mysterious self uh betrays t'challa and like turns him into the collector because she has a debt to settle pretty in character of nebula but we'll speak about what happens with her and t'challa and the collector later on because bit of a twist to be fair and then we see that t'challa is still wearing his wakanda necklace after all this time which i think is like cool but weird at the same time like he's kept this necklace on every day i guess to remind him of his home planet because we find out that yondu told t'challa that his home like city or place where he was born was destroyed so i guess he'd want to wear something to remind himself of that but you know he was pretty old when it all happened so you'd think he'd remember it um either way it was pretty cool the way that they had the wakandan ship um and then like they showed the message similar to black widow's message on the quinjet uh to hulk um but it's to chaka to t'challa but obviously they don't know where t'challa is to send it out like a beacon which i thought was pretty cool then obviously as the argument with yondu and everything like that again um pretty fitting of the two characters to be fair and then we skip to some more of nebula but we learn that she didn't betray them which is the twist that i was talking about i thought that she genuinely did turn t'challa into the into the collector um but again, it's just showing how different this timeline is to the main one, where Nebula is already a good person. Obviously, she turns into a good person in the main timeline, but it's much later on, um, depending when this is actually set. I'm not sure when it is, like this episode, but I assume it's before Infinity War and Endgame when she does turn, like, or Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2, when she does turn good originally. So yeah, she always had it in her, so I think it's realistic for her to like, well, be good in this timeline. Then T'Challa, obviously he was in the cage because he was turned in by Nebula, gets out of the cage by using his necklace and punching the glass and he fights the Collector and the Collector has a collection of Mjolnir, Captain America's shield, which is why I don't think Captain Carter exists in this universe, um, Hela's like headdress, uh, the Necrosword and I believe some of Loki's daggers, well they were just daggers and I think they were Loki's, it would make sense if she's come across Hela and Thor. So in this universe, uh, the Collector has come across Thor, Captain America, Hela and Loki and assuming he's by himself, maybe he brought like an army but I don't know, uh, got the better of them all and managed to collect their stuff which I think is like crazy. How like, okay maybe I can understand Loki and Cap but how does he somehow manage to beat Thor and Hela? How has he got Mjolnir up there like? Because obviously you have to be worthy to hold it. Is the collector worthy? Does someone work for the collector that is worthy to like lift it and put it on the thing? Um, maybe he just had like a, a machine to lift it up because an elevator can do it. And is the elevator worthy? Not really because an elevator doesn't like have consciousness. So I guess machines can lift the hammer. And people think that's why Vision could. Not because he was worthy. But anyway, I think Vision is worthy. Um, yeah, it's just so weird that the collector came across Hela, Thor, Loki and Cap. Got the better of all four. Um, just because Yondu took T'Challa, I just think that's so, like, outrageous, and I was all for it, I thought it was really cool to see all of it, and seeing the Collector in this way, being like a good fighter, um, yeah, it was really interesting. While this is happening, Thanos actually fights the Black Order. Well, not all of them. He fights Cull Obsidian and uh, Proxima Midnight. And when he's fighting Cull Obsidian, he has like that weapon that like changes between things. But when it's a hammer, Thanos basically catches it exactly like Hulk catches Thor's hammer on Sakaar, which I think was, you know, not exactly the most out there detail that everyone would notice. But I noticed it. And I was happy to see it. It's just cool little stuff like that that they put in. Everything um, I really, really enjoy seeing. And I definitely noticed it first time around, which I'm pretty proud of. But I don't know if you can see the resemblance as well. But it's just the fact that we have the angle of the hammer going down. And then we see the fist catch it. And then the face kind of like to the side of it. Or I can't remember exactly where Thanos' face was now. But I remember at the time thinking it looked similar. 
However, Thanos is defeated by Proximal Midnight and Carl Obsidian, showing that he's definitely weaker than the no-stone Thanos that we see in Endgame. That's like the only time we see him fight without stones, and he takes on Iron Man, Cap, and Thor all at the same time and is successful. And losing to Carl Obsidian on Proximal Midnight is definitely like showing that he's weaker because beating three people that are like extremely powerful um, maybe Cap is worse than like Carl Obsidian and uh, Proxima Midnight, but, but Iron Man can definitely take Proxima Midnight uh, like 1v1 and Thor can definitely take Carl Obsidian 1v1 and then you've got Cap in there as well. He managed to beat those three, but this time he's lost to, well, just the two that are worse. So he's definitely weaker, which I guess you could expect because depending on what time Thanos came good, he's had less like fighting. And also, he's not in the end game scenario when he is fighting for his life to get the Infinity Stones to do his objective. But anyway, he lost to Carl Obsidian and Proxima Midnight, which I thought was interesting. I thought he'd be able to take those two, and maybe Ebony Moore comes and then like helps them to defeat Thanos, because obviously Ebony Moore is one of the more powerful Black Order members, and he can do stuff that Thanos just can't counter. Nebula then saves Thanos by turning Carl Obsidian into some like massive plant by chucking the things that they went to collect from the collector, I forget the name, uh, down his throat, and then they escape. And then back to the fight with T'Challa and the collector, Yondu arrives, uh, the collector breaks Yondu's arrow, but Yondu breaks the uh, Hela's headrest off of uh, the collector's head, and then they end up getting the collector in one of his cages. So two very, very good fight scenes, especially for like an animated thing. So that was really, really good. And you know, it's ironic that the collector is put in one of his own cages. They give like the controls to all the cages to like that pink girl that uh, grabbed the power stone in Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 1. And she lets out everyone from their cage to go and beat up the collector basically. And in the midst of all of this, um, the moon dog managed to get them get himself, I assume it's a he, onto T'Challa and Yondu's ship. So they now have a pet, which I thought was a nice touch. Then another very, very cool part, T'Challa decides to return to Wakanda and he's with all of the Ravengers. So we see Thanos and Yondu in like the Wakandan palace, which was really, really weird. But a lot of Easter eggs there because we have uh, Kraglin talking about uh, the jump points where it makes your face go weird. Obviously something we saw in Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2. And then we see Thanos explaining his plan um, to one of the Dora Milaje members and they reply how it sounds a lot like genocide and some other stuff like that. And like... T'Challa talks to T'Chaka with Yondu by his side and you know it's just it's just a really nice thing to see at the end um, making me excited for what they do with this story because obviously T'Challa has returned to Wakanda is he going to become the king do we see Killmonger where do the Ravengers go does Thanos stay on earth and then obviously to round off the episode we see Ego go for uh, Star-Lord who is working in a fast food place and obviously we know why Ego wants Star-Lord so setting up another potential episode. I don't know if that is a confirmed one for this series like something about Ego but I know the Guardians of the Galaxy end up fighting in basically the Battle of New York where the Avengers were in the first Avengers movie so maybe it has something to do with that I don't know but there seems to be a lot of Guardians of the Galaxy stuff in What If um, so I don't know when the Ego stuff is going to happen but yeah setting up an episode where that does happen maybe it's not even in this season but yes so so much happened in this what if episode it was so so good i thoroughly enjoyed it what did you guys think of this what if episode i was just overwhelmed by how much happened there was so much stuff i definitely preferred it to the captain carter episode although i did think the captain carter episode was much more realistic but this is a what if series so they can be like as outrageous as they want with things that happen and well if that's Thanos turning into a good guy because of a conversation and working for the Ravengers then they can do that if they want so yes I thoroughly enjoyed it let me know what you thought in the comments down below please do leave a like if you enjoyed this video subscribe for more I'll be doing a what if video for every episode of the what if series I have a bad batch episode tier list ranking very very soon I've got a bunch of ideas that I want to get done really really soon and I'm trying to get them done as quickly as possible please do subscribe if you are new and click the notification bell um, get me to 10k and I promise you I will have a very very good 10k special coming for you and you're not going to want to miss it so yes thank you for watching goodbye